Good morning. Um, this morning I was reading in First Corinthians and I was trying to kind of see what God wanted me to talk about. And then I really felt like he wanted me to talk about this. So I read this verse um, talking about free will and how, you know, God's given us free will. He's given us the right to do anything and everything we want, but not everything is beneficial. Um, and it's Paul talking to the church in Corinth. It's just his letters to the church that are so cool. Um, so I'm going to read it. It's 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12 to 17. It says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything, you say. You say, food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual morality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a the prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in the body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual morality and from all other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I just think this is a really good verse. Because it not only talks about, you know, obviously sex sexual morality, but also just like honoring the Lord. Um, it can be so easy for us to just put ourselves before God and put our wants and needs and pleasures before the Lord. Whatever that, you know, may look like in your life. But I think just like God created this world for us to live into it. For us to live in the world. He created the world perfect. And then when sin entered the world, when Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord's commands, that's when sin entered the world. Um, and that's where God, I mean, God gave Adam and Eve free will. He just told them a command. He said, don't eat from the tree. And don't eat, you know, any fruit from this tree. And then they did. It's, you know devil deceived Eve and then she fell for it and ate the fruit even though God told her not to she still went with what the devil said because she wanted to know more she wanted to be better you know but then it was a sin she went against what God said because someone else told her something that she thought was more enticing and because of that her husband ate the fruit as well and then sin entered the world but even still, God still gives us free will. You know, because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we get to be saved. We get to ask for forgiveness and just are forgiven. Because just like God's love is overflowing, Christ's compassion is so abundant and overflowing. Like, there's nothing you could do that would make him not forgive you. You know, even make him not love you like he has so much love for you and never ending forgiveness which is just like so unfathomable but it's true you know god's love for us is not like how the world loves it's not like how your friends or family or boyfriend or girlfriend husband wife it's not like how they love you know because obviously they have a lot of love for you but you know there's gonna be things that you do that really upset them or hurt them and that can really kind of waver your thought of like do they still love me do they still like me but you never have to feel that way with god because god's always going to love you always he created you you know he knows everything about you he created the spirit inside of you he created every little intricate thing about you like god was so intentional when he made you and he formed you in your mother's womb like he spent nine months working on you like he loves you so much and there's so many things in your life that god has planted there and there's so many new things he wants to do in your life and he 
like God's just so good and so intentional with everything and he just has so much love for you and such a beautiful plan for your life if you would just let him move in your life. You know, it says, I have the right to do anything. But Paul's saying, but not everything is beneficial. That's so true. Like Adam and Eve had the right. They were told not to, but like physically, like they, they ate from the tree. They had the right. But that was not beneficial. Not one bit. You know, just because we have free will doesn't mean we get to do whatever we want. It doesn't mean we should do whatever we want. Because the Bible talks a lot about fearing the Lord. Because God is a sovereign, almighty, strong God. He's all-powerful. He created the universe, the earth, me, you, everyone, everything. He's also a king. Like we should respect that, you know, how, you know, you have the queen, the queen's dead. You have the king, King Charles, and you're supposed to respect him. You know, people honor him and tend to him and serve him because that's his role here. But just like, like God's in heaven, obviously he's greater than King Charles, but it's just like that respect you have for a king. Just like with God, like God, we got to respect him. If he doesn't want us to do something and we know that, honor him. Fear the Lord, like fear God's strength and might. You know, you shouldn't be afraid to talk to God or afraid of God, but just respect him. Respect his commands, respect something that you know he's not wanting you to do. Do something that's going to be pleasing and uplifting and serving him rather than going against him and hurting him, you know, because he loves you and he... He has such a heart for you. You know, it's not fun for Jesus when they see us sinning. I'm sure it's not, you know, but that's why Jesus died on the cross because he knew that, you know, we are sinners by birth here on earth. Like we're bound to sin and fall short of the glory of God, but it's by God's grace that we're saved, not by works, not by doing everything that's right, but just by asking for forgiveness and we're saved because of Jesus. I just want to encourage you that just because you have free will doesn't mean you, you should do whatever you want to do. Honoring God and putting him first above your physical needs that you feel like you need to um, abide to and just God is greater than any temptation you may be struggling with. Like God can free you from anything and I believe you will if you just give it to the Lord and just surrender it to him, whatever it is you're going through. You know, whatever sin, whatever temptation, just because you can do it, because you have free will, doesn't mean you should. But God is greater than whatever it is you are going through, whatever it is you're struggling with. God is so much greater. And if you would just surrender it to Jesus, give it to him, ask God to take it, lay it at the foot of the cross, He's going to take it, and you're going to see how God is so much greater and stronger than any of it. He can take away, you know, the shame of that sin. He can take away the fear. He can take away the pain because he doesn't want you to live this way. And he wants you to live with the fruits of the Spirit. He wants you to have kindness and compassion and faithfulness and patience and love and joy, you know, Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, in Philippians, Paul says to rejoice always. And he says it again, rejoice in the Lord. God is so good. And if you would just follow his ways and his commands to the best of your ability, um, knowing that you're not going to be perfect, we're not expected to be perfect, we're just expected to try and follow God's will for our life rather than the will that we have for ourselves on earth. Because God is just greater and we're here to bring honor and glory and other people to Jesus and to grow in relationship with him while we're here on earth. But yeah, just because we have free will does not mean we get to abuse 